In our second video for fractions, we're going to look at multiplying and dividing fractions. And again, like adding and subtracting fractions, knowing how to multiply and divide fractions well is essential for being successful in future math classes. And uh, the better you get at it now, the easier it'll be later. And personally, I find multiplying and dividing fractions to be easier than adding and subtracting. And one of the reasons for that is we don't have to have anything like a common denominator, like adding and subtracting. So let's jump right into the first example here. And we have the example 3 fifths times 2 thirds. We'll be looking at multiplying first. One of the nice things about multiplying fractions is we don't have to change anything. We can multiply straight across. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and get our answer. Something that we can do though before we multiply is look and see, does any, do either of the numbers on the top simplify or cancel with either of the numbers on the bottom? And the nice thing is we can cancel not only within a fraction, but across fractions too. Um, so if something on the top, let's say like 3, cancels with something on the bottom, also 3 here, 3 and 3, we can both divide by 3 and reduce those to 1. We can do that with this. So we cancel these out. Both 3's, 3 goes into 3 3 times, so we get 1. 3 goes into 3 1 time, so we get 1. Sorry. And then we can multiply our new numbers. 1 times 2 is 2, and 5 times 1 is 5. 2 fifths. And just to see that it does get us the same answer, if we had done 3 fifths times 2 thirds, that would have been 6 over 5 times 3, 15. And then we would have had to reduce what goes into both 6 and 15, 3 does, and it goes into 6 2 times and into 15 5 times, we get the same answer. But the nice thing is when we simplify beforehand, it's easier simplifying, it's easier multiplying, and then you should have a simplified answer. So let's take a look at that in the second one here, 16 21st times 7 12 Again, we could just multiply straight across. But these are kind of big numbers. Let's see if we can simplify some things. 16 and 21, nothing goes into both of those. But how about 16 and 12? Well, 4 goes into both of those. So we can simplify that, divide each by 4, and we can end up with 4, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. And 7 and, 7 and 21, likewise. 7 goes into both, so we can divide both of these by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 21 divided by 7 is 3. Now we can multiply these numbers, 4 times 1 and 3 times 3, and our answer we get is 4 ninths. Now we could have done it without simplifying. We would have had harder, harder multiplication and then we would have had to simplify after we got those large numbers. So simplify first, then multiply across. Now let's take a look, what happens if we have mixed numbers? Well, unlike adding or subtracting, we don't have an option to keep them as mixed numbers. We have to change them to improper fractions. So what we do is first, 3 and 2 thirds. Change that, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2. So we get 11 thirds times 2 and 1 half, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1, we get 5 halves. Again, look and see if anything simplifies. 11 and 3, 11 and 2, nothing is common there. 5 and 3, 5 and 2, nothing in common. So it's a, we can't simplify anything here. That's okay. We don't have to simplify anything. We just know our answer should be simplified as well then. So multiply across, 11 times 5 is 55, 3 times 2, 6, so we get 55 sixths, that can be our answer, or change it to a mixed fraction, 9 and 1 sixth. 
Uh, our last multiplication example, we see it written a little differently here. Another way that multiplication can be written is just a parenthesis and then another parenthesis with nothing in between that tells us we're multiplying them. But to multiply these, we have to change these mixed numbers to improper fractions. So 4 and 1 fourth, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1, we get 17 fourths, times 2 and 4 fifths, 10, 14, we get 14 fourths, or not fourths, 14 fifths. So we can multiply those, but before we do that, let's see if anything simplifies. 17 does not have anything in common with 4 or 5. 14 does not have anything in common with 5, but 2 goes into both 14 and 4. So we'll divide those by 2, and we'll get 7 and 2. Now we can multiply those numbers. So we get 17 times 7 is still a fairly big number. We might have to multiply that out by hand. 49, so nine, 7 times 7 is 49, so 9, carry the 4, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 119. So we get 119 over 2 times 5, 10. So we can write it like that, or we can write it as 11 and 9 tenths. So multiplying, straightforward, make sure it's an uh, improper fraction or just a regular fraction. Look and see if anything on the top simplifies with anything on the bottom of either fraction, and then multiply straight across. Now, dividing, we're putting this in the same video because dividing essentially involves the same steps as multiplication with one extra step. To divide two fractions, 3 fifths divided by 2 thirds, you'll notice before we did 3 fifths times 2 thirds, here we're doing the opposite, divided by. What we do to divide is, uh, for this, we can say it's keep, change, flip. So what we do is keep the first fraction, but what we do is change the divided by symbol to times, and then we flip the last, the last fraction. So we'll flip 2 thirds, so it becomes 3 halves. So now 3 fifths divided by 2 thirds is the same as 3 fifths times 3 over 2. And here we can look, nothing simplifies, but 3 times 3 is 9, 5 times 2 is 10. We quickly get our answer, 9 tenths. Another way that that might be written, division of two fractions, is as a big fraction, 6 sevenths over 3 tenths. Now, the second fraction is what we're dividing by, so we do the same thing. We flip this one, and we, I should put this more over here. We take the top one, 6 sevenths, change it to multiplication, and then flip that second fraction to become 10 over 3. And we can look and see one thing does cancel. 6 and 3, 3 goes into both. So we can divide those by 3 and get 2 and 1. 2 times 10 is 20. 7 times 1 is 7. We get 20 sevenths or uh, 2 and 6 sevenths. And we'll look at one more. 4 and a half divided by 5 and a third. Just like multiplication, to do this we have to change them first to improper fractions. 4 and a half, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1, we get 9. And then 5 and a third, we get 15, 16 thirds. Now, it's improper fractions, but we still have to do our change and our flip. So we have to change it to multiplication, flip our second fraction, and keep our first fraction. So we get 9 halves times 3 sixteenths. And we see 9 and 16, nothing goes into both. 3 and 2, nothing goes into both. So we'll just have to multiply. 9 times 3 is 27. 2 times 16 is 32. And we can confirm nothing goes into both of those. That is our simplified answer. So 
make sure for multiplying, it's always when you multiply, multiply straight across and look and see if anything cancels or simplifies. And remember the extra step with division is take your second fraction that you're dividing by and flip it and change it to multiplication. So that is everything that you need to know to be successful with multiplying and dividing fractions. Go to the practice assignment and practice, the, practice those problems and then you can go to the assessment.